Good morning from Sacred Space at Titania's Realm. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's 9.53 a.m. on the 27th of September 2024. And uh, we've had, it's drying up now, but we've had a fair bit of rain overnight. Not heavy rain, but a good long soak. And um, it was raining until a short time ago. Um, which I'm grateful for. Very happy to see. It's quite windy outside also. Um, <clears throat> I woke up at uh, 8am, which is pretty good because I've been waking up very early, which is um, exhausting for me. So I'm happy about that. Had a bit of a sleep in this morning. Must have needed it. So we'll carry on with today's readings of even date. <coughs> Charlie, she's going to poo. She's assumed the position. Yes, I was right. Right, here we go, Charlie. Got you, got the cloth there before you got to wreak any hell on my laptop, little one. Yes, I know. So today's um, journal... Uh, entry is titled Sea Monkeys and Rumpelstiltskin Back Away from the Tanya and Take That Dead Davidson with You, You Evil Fuckers. I'm reclaiming what was always mine by birthright life, love, freedom, and Happiness, even in the COVID epoch. What have you done, Charlie? You've clicked on something or upset something? No, it's just its usual flippity, jibbity, flashing weirdness. Hang on, let me just pull this down. I don't know if she did it or if it just happened randomly. No, it's not going to work. Oh, yes. Try and get the screen to go down. Table finished, one coat of varnish, many more to go. This was on the 27th of September 2016, so that's eight years ago that I completed my decoupage dining table. <coughs> Twenty seventh of September, twenty twenty four. Today, <laughs> today, nine nineteen a.m. It's finally raining today. It rained during the night too. A good long soaking for the garden at sacred space. I feel so grateful and happy. I was making my daily oh, faith in Bagora. I was making my daily YouTube videos yesterday while somatizing that change in the weather. Like the weather which I am, uh, it was a tad hilarious. I had my friendly kookaburra sitting on a bough above Charlie and my head, just chilling and listening to my voice as I read out loud. He seemed to find it interesting or soothing. I was reading from... The People Could Fly, Black American Folk Tales. The story I was reading had actual ancient African spells in it, which I was stumbling over because it's not my Mamaloshan or my dialect, but I gave it my best efforts. Next thing I know, a much larger, older and determined kookaburra flew down at my feet and plucked up a weird looking white worm or grub of some kind. Scared me half to death as it was such a quick and sudden movement and I thought he was launching at my bare feet. I jumped and kind of shrieked. That old bird flew up on the hill's hoist and showed me he was happy with his prey and sort of smiled at me. 
The other kookaburra, smaller and prettier, so probably a young male, stayed with me a long time, just listening and chilling. I had fed him some chicken skin, so he wasn't hungry or hunting, I guess. I feel so loved by the wild birds that visit my garden. They are so accustomed to seeing me outside with Charlie that they all think I'm part of their flock. It's really delightful. Next thing, I will have wild kookaburras perched on my shoulder if they get much more accustomed to my strange witchy ways. That would be a sight to behold, or rather scary, given how large their beaks are, being right next to my face. I had a regular male king parrot visitor who used to fly slightly above my head and would tap on my crown chakra with his feet mid-flight. He used to chill beside me and have wee chats, a gorgeous bird, but he and his mate haven't been here for a long time. They usually come in spring, summer months, so maybe they'll come back soon. I had a blue tongue lizard and a gorgeous water dragon visit sacred space yesterday also. The blue tongue disappeared into Toad Hall, which is a hole at the edge of the path they all use like a super highway underground. The water dragon interrupted my reading on YouTube by making quite a bit of noise, crunching on leaves. I managed to film him. So today the garden is getting a good drenching and we are all happy. Aren't we, Charlie? The sun's come out, but there's, um, there's quite a few squalling kind of weather down in the south, so I'm guessing more rain is imminent. 27th of September 2023. Another lovely day in paradise. I took it easy today. I worked hard yesterday on the silver chain. I ordered a parrot clasp so I can complete it. I spent the day in my garden in my hammock. Peter came along with little Coco and she literally ran into my arms. Then we cuddled while Peter chatted. She made my day with her abundant love. Coco's my friend Peter's little, she's a very tiny little part Shih Tzu, part poodle dog. Oh, and she's so madly in love with me. It's absolutely gorgeous, actually. <laughs> so um, very sweet. <clears throat> Sweetest little dog. I'm watching podcasts and breathing life and light back into my body assisted nobly by the spirits. 27th of September 2022. Never forget what they, meaning big farmer, did to me. Prozac, Surzone, Effexor, Cipramel, Zoloft, Abilify, Zyprexa, Cogentin, a too high dose which sent me blind for a few days. After that, I needed glasses. Seroquel. There were others too. Lyrica, Valium. I still, on very rare occasions, have to um, take a Valium if my nervous system's really, really overactivated. I drooled. I shuffled. I developed... Parkinsonian symptoms for which I was prescribed the blindening cogentin. This was sold to me by Big Pharma to heal my complex PTSD. My punishment for not killing myself at ground zero as a child after the horrific pernicious abuse. For daring to cleave to my own soul and life for speaking my truth. 
I can't help feeling that these drugs contributed to my prolapse for which I was enhanced, not with a Johnston & Johnston TV tape to fix my bladder. Class action ongoing, awaiting settlement, which I'm told is due this December. And my enlarged liver and defunct, now excised gallbladder. <clears throat> I live with a ticking time bomb for autoimmune disease primarily because of that. But let us not forget the Lyme-like symptoms from various tick bites, as um, I wrote also, but as well. I was used as a human guinea pig, then victim blamed and gaslighted, and yes, even tortured with more psychosexual abuse in the QE2 hospital when I had my bladder surgery and hysterectomy. And um, again, when I had my gallbladder surgery at the uh, PA2, for which I put in a formal complaint to um, my local Member of Parliament, ironically, nothing got done, of course. Nothing ever gets done. If you're female, you're fair game in their worldview. I mean, it's just beyond fucking evil. I had no value as a woman, as a woman with very little family support, no husband, no money. So they figure they can do whatever they want to you and get away with it. They don't, don't realise that I have the power of my voice and refusing to be silenced. I was sold down the river again and again. Then the constant colonoscopies to invade my already long ago poisoned system. So hell no, they have harmed my body quite enough. No more drugs, no more surgeries. Please God, no more surgeries. The gallbladder one in 2019 almost killed me. It was very close. I was on my very last breath. Well, with every breath since then, I will fight you, amoral, dirty, filthy, greedy cunts. What was your next Lexus and holiday home buying trick? Doctors and scientists, huh? More unconscionable evil. I refer here specifically to the um, COVID epoch. By the way, I don't include my psychiatrist in this diatribe of fury. He's been a very good and kind and supportive doctor and human being to me and um, has even paid for private urology visits when I thought I was dying, which was touch and go, quite frankly, and my CPAP device, so he's, he is a good, kind man, and he supported me eight years ago when I said to him, I'm sick of drooling and shuffling in a zombie existence, so I wish to go off all my psych meds, and he was quite reluctant because he feared that it would trigger some kind of massive breakdown, but instead I flew and uh, reclaimed my mind and gradually over the last eight years have gotten better. Thank the gods for that. So, <clears throat> I continue on writing here. Ah, yes. AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson. I know you well. What you are truly capable of. See all, see all those drugs before that I was kept molly coddled on and carefully contained. Your corruption and greed untrammeled and unconquered because most people are too complacent and complicit and or 
just too eager to be part of your elite programmed genocide. Fuck you as you have fucked me enough. You have killed our kids and our future fertility, killed our minds and bodies. But when you come for our souls, we will fight you to the very death if necessary. My attempted suicide in 2015 was a sacrifice I was more than willing to make after decades of abuse, abject treachery, horror, and pharmacological chemical lobotomizing, which by the way cost me decades of earning potential, the, the, the ability to study or build a life for myself for my old age, cost me dearly. Three decades I have spent in therapy with three different doctors. My, my beautiful psychiatrist took it to heart and said, well, I failed you then. I said, no, you have not failed me, doctor. But unfortunately, my I've been unable to heal from all the horror and the cumulative trauma imposed on us as a collective as well in the last four years. That part I did not sign up for either, but then many people did unwittingly and thinking they're going to keep, you know, keep their jobs and a roof over their head and protect their families. And I understand that. For that, I have compassion. I'm just pretty disgusted with the people that did it for a donut and a football ticket. So, well, what can I say? I don't, I don't need to say it. <clears throat> But my gods insisted I remain on this planet. Why? So I can have my life returned to me, my wealth returned to me to the power of 10, my health recalibrated into a new normal, drug-free, psychic and pharmacological vampire free. Maybe even find a real and enduring human lover one fine day. Someone not afraid of my preternatural rage and courage and integrity. Not afraid of my gods and angels who walked me through that hellish life filled with so many monsters. And on that subject, I want to remind all my YouTube audience and subscribers, this is not a dating site for lonely men I don't care where you are in the world. I had one yesterday. I had to remove all his comments. Um, it was just getting too freaking weird. I'm not here for you to predate on. Not even if you come to me in real world, it, moving around wherever you might move around me in real world, your attentions are not welcome. This is a channel dedicated to survivors of child sexual abuse, survivors of rape, survivors of domestic violence, survivors of systemic abuse and violence perpetrated on, on us as a collective. This channel is for anarchists and revolutionaries and people of courage and guts and determination. It is not for seedy, lascivious, creepy men jerking off behind their computer screens wanting to predate on me. That person has been reported. I know nothing got done about it, so I have removed them. And that person, if you have an ounce of cooth, can unsubscribe from my channel and remove yourself off my channel because your attentions are not welcome. Mama T has spoken. I continue reading. Yes, the gods were truth speaking when they sent me back 
on the night of the 25th and 26th of June 2019. It is a hellscape of epic proportions. Yet I rise above it. I am healing. I am surrounded by good, kind, decent, supportive, loving people now. I know who I am. I am not afraid to speak and or write or cleave to my truth in this perverted, toxic, evil society. Nay, entire planet. The last few days have been magical and beautiful. I met up with my daughter, whom I had not seen in several months. My best friend Jared also. We had a unique experience together at the Shiota exhibition, immersed in the grief and darkness of the Japanese artist. We played together, interacted with the exhibits, we evolved, we unfurled, we bloomed. Most other people moved through the exhibits like zombies, not quite alive, but not quite dead. I know how that feels, by the way, for decades subsisting on very hefty psych meds. I know what that feels to be not quite alive, yet not quite dead, living like a zombie. I did it for 20 years at least, probably quite some years during my childhood too, although in those days in my childhood I wasn't on any psychiatric medications, but I might as well be because I was barely existing even then. Just why I do not suffer fools and I do not suffer predators or abusers. Bing, bang, boom, babies. <laughs> Out. Empty husks. Shells of their former or perhaps even future potentiates. Some stood back in awe at the three of us, all artists, nourished by the darkness and the creativity, gathering meaning in another's life journey, holding sacred, the most sacred of all truths, our shared humanity. So no, the sudden adult deaths are no accident, the adverse reactions. So from one who survived decades of psych meds, which did absolutely nothing to heal my complex PTSD. In fact, I only began to heal after my mother's death, for which in the subsequent years, more filthy, disgusting enemies piled on like verminous carrion feeders until I decided to die. Many of these pylons were members of my own Jewish community. Go figure, shameful it was. Well, I will not bear your shame or your evil. I will thrive and I will hold my sacred truths and my integrity and dignity until the day the gods decree my time on this planet is over. I will love and be loved by those people of merit who see me and treat me with honour and respect, by the way. I will stay alive for as long as my mind, body and spirit permits me. A zombie, no more. Awake and aware and so very, very deserving of all the good that is in my life right now and all the even more good that is to come. Why? 
just because. There are decades of abuse, evil, ignominy, slander, violence and sexual betrayals to overcome. Decades. 57 years of it. Try 59. So I'm claiming the next remaining decades to be solely mine. Mine. I'm claiming it. I'll be 60 next year. My 60s are going to be awesome because I will accept nothing less. I have a choice and I will choose according to whatever, whatever more evil gets thrown at us accordingly. Because I'm done. I'm done wallowing in other people's fecal matter. Done. Uh, so I repeat again. So I'm claiming the next remaining decades to be solely mine. For me, of me, by me, through me. Of my own love, light and truth. Created by my heart and soul. All the rest can just slough off. And I shared a video that was posted on YouTube, Cause of Death Unknown, Big Pharma and the Selling of Mental Illness. Trigger warning, religious symbology pertaining to my faith, you do you. But these are my spiritual experiences. Smiley face. 11.11am. My angels have been very busy. Recalibrating me personally. Showing me great love and kindness and generosity. Love of the supernal kind can be a tad terrifying especially when one is unaccustomed to it but i am grateful and happy and standing in awe in these days of awe which begin on on the the evening of the 2nd of october and i can already feel the intense powerful spiritual energy behind it already it's what five days away already building in my in my spirit I can already sense the excitement and the um, anticipation building <clears throat> so so but I'm grateful and happy and standing in awe in these days of awe which began early for me several weeks ago in fact with a multitude of benevolences bestowed upon me by the gods and those whom truly see me. While other Jews spent yesterday in shul, that means temple, the Tanya worshipped art by the generosity of her daughter and her best friend. Art, which is often an agonised truth held up to the light for free expression and edifice, a canary down the mine, or a post-apocalyptic sacrifice, or a cry of a warrior god or goddess gone sublime, is my religion now. Perhaps it always has been. Art, freedom of expression, free speech, free will. Free, open-hearted, agape, unconditional love built on honour and respect and integrity and genuine care. Life, l'chaim, be in the world but not of the world. 
be your own unique self, not a mass formation psychosis byproduct of totalitarian hate and putridness. Choose not to become a zombie or a vicious robot. Fight with the fervour of millions of ancestors in your very veins. The quiet fight that comes from non-violent truth. Hold your own life so sacred and holy and protected that your value is far beyond rubies, my darlings. Always, always honour the gods. Sorry. Honour the god and or goddess within. And you can say that in plural afterwards. It's a bit of a typo there. Sanctity, serenity, sublime joy be ours. Later I wrote... <clears throat> When the angels wish to talk to you, they find all sorts of images and ways of communicating. It's a bit astonishing. In between the blue light flashing on my laptop screen, there is a Hebrew letter there. It goes like that. If you can just make it out. And upside down, it looks like that. Yes. Mama T, being a shaman, notices these things. It's sometimes quite astonishing. Another greasy stain on the surface of my mug of tea that looks like a Hebrew letter. Well, lol, it is Rosh Hashanah. The Holy One is never far away from me, even if I am a shawless heathen by choice, after decades of abuse. Let my people go, but the Holy One never lets me go because they know my love is real. Uh, in calling God they, I'm referring to the fact that God has no gender, therefore I choose to prefer to that energy as they as opposed to him or her because I don't believe God has a gender. It's bigger than gender. It's bigger than everything that we could ever imagine with our ordinary mortal minds. My friend Brechi Tit wrote, so what Hebrew letter then and what is its meaning? To me it looks like the astrological symbol of Ceres, the great nature mother that gives and takes. I think it is the Greek name for Demeter, Persephone's mother, who could not live without her daughter. This myth must be special for you, as it is to me, indeed, especially given that my daughter and I, my last remaining daughter, have long been estranged now. Just, just on a year, a year and a week. And that turned up in my cup two years ago. scroll back to where we were I was trying to find what year we were in so I lost our spot right here we go the one on the left looks like the Kabbalistic cuff but I'm not sure of the meaning I like your interpretation love heart 
Yes, we have certainly done our time in the underworld of Persephone. Some of us more than others, years stumbling around, munted out on psych meds. I lost many, many years in the Shadowlands. It's taken a great courage and great strength and great determination to reclaim my life and rebuild from too many, too many ground zeros, including in recent memory four years ago. Some of them were happening concurrent to me recovering from that gallbladder surgery. So it was very, very fraught and difficult times, which I navigated with the help of my psychiatrist, but living alone, struggling through all that alone. I'm really feeling like a spring flower bursting out of my long fallow atrophied state, which is why you should never give up on people, people of earth. Some of us might be lying fallow, zombies, but you never know when the light's going to switch back on and we're going to dance or create or love again or live fully again or make jewellery again or weave or spin fleece or did I mention dance, write, ignite passions in people, sometimes people's passions are ignited rather inappropriately I might add and I'm not responsible for that, that's on you. So perhaps this is a new unfurling in my life pattern. It is spring here. The aromas as I walk around the neighbourhood are gorgeous. Brecky replied, well both relate to Sarah's spring and your spiritual spring. When Ceres got her daughter back from the underworld only for six months, the earth came to life again. What makes the Smith even more special is the one you identify most with. I identify most with Persephone, but we can learn by imagining, imagining to be the other. What would it be like to be Demeter and lose your daughter? if she is the only thing you live for? And is it bad to have the reason for a happy life outside yourself? Wise words. I know that feeling, losing both my daughters. And yes, the first time I lost them, they were indeed the only things I was staying alive for. And I had stayed alive primarily to ensure that they reached adulthood so then to be rejected and abandoned after all the immense struggles and suffering I went through was a soul death of epic proportions. And I had to rebuild and regrow from that ground zero too. Here I reply, I did indeed lose my daughter in recent months. We reconnected yesterday at the Shyota exhibition and it was lovely to be with her again. We picked up where we left off without any acrimony. Our relationship has been rather strained and there was a bit of a cold war during which time period Crystal was very sick with the exact same issue I had had, a large cyst in our backs which by the way, in, in magical circles, that kind of infection appearing in the middle of your back is, um, is a form of demonic attack where it tries to gain entry through, through the back of your, um, your lungs or through your heart. It's interesting that we both had the same thing in the same area of our back. except hers was badly managed at the hospital and has left her with an open wound which needs constant 
cleaning and packing. It was intense. I saw it. It was enormous. I can't believe they completely fucked up the way they did. A hospital, you're supposed to be able to trust them as being some kind of medical expert, am I right? By the gods. So she has gone through the Persephonic health crisis and is slightly better now. I too am much better with my lungs, but my wound in my back still burns and itches badly. I find it very odd that we both have the same issue on our backs in roughly the same area, especially as we do not live together or see each other very often. But yes, I was very heartwarmed to see her again after several months. As I said, this estrangement's lasted a year and a week. Like Persephone, she was in Hades during my winter discontent. Mama T has a tendency to lay waste to those who cause her harm. So a cruel comment she made to me literally bit her on her back. Although I did not curse her or wish her harm, but it was very spiritual as it meant she totally experienced my illness, only worse, and is still healing from it, which is awful. But it gave me pause for thought that the gods conspire to punish us so spectacularly as much as they have been gifting and blessing us. We did a lot of walking yesterday, so today I was smited by my sciatic nerve in my back and a heavy depression and or exhaustion. But we had a lovely time together. It was good to see my family, my family being Crystal and Jared and also my friend Lynn. <clears throat> It seems like, uh, Brecky replied, it seems like this mutual thing on both of your backs is a kind of umbilical ward, wound, say the shadow of the umbilical cord. That's why it's on the back. Again, I found that very perceptive of Brecky. Very intelligent, clever woman. I replied, hmm, interesting. I'm happy to hear you got together again, says Brechib to me. So this is truly spring, and I put a photo of Ceres symbol here underneath. You see it as a kind of hand scythe meant for harvesting. If you're together, you can harvest the fruits of your connection. I replied, it's up high just out of reach, where, which made it nearly impossible to put bandages on the back of our lungs. And here she posted the Ceres symbol, which does indeed look like a scythe for harvesting. Brecky wrote, out of reach, exactly. So only if you are together, you can scratch each other's back. And then she put a smiley face and I laughed and I wrote, cool. I find it amazing how the spirits or ancestors that love me send me these little messages Lately, on top of my cup of tea as I stop drinking coffee and reading the coffee grounds. It seems if it is important enough to the spirits, they find a way to communicate in symbols. But of course, I don't always comprehend their messages. Brecky replied, 
but it is also the fact that you read them and are ready to receive. Indeed, if, you, if you're open and willing and open-hearted and open-minded and spiritual, you receive the messages sometimes on a daily basis and it can be soul nourishing and heartworm heartwarming heartwarming and comforting actually sometimes astonishingly how accurate and prescient and on point they are i replied i am always receiving lately then i put things on facebook as i find it interesting to see what we all interpret receiving and therefore transmitting in Kabbalah, to learn is to teach, to teach is to learn. I honour the spirits by sharing their wisdom and insights. And I notice the more I do that, the more um, information gets channeled to me and through me. It's, it's like you build up a connection and a relationship based on trust and respect, although I sometimes talk to them as if they're people and not always quite so respectful but they know they know they know i love them and that i that i have this relationship with them where we talk as if they were still in human form and uh, we, we've built up this relationship now where you know I've, I've even witnessed myself communicating on my youtube videos quite openly and being taken a bit aback because it was well one of them was like having three conversations going at once i had to tell them all to back off because it's crazy making when they do that it's the same as if there was three or four living people all yelling at you all at the same time you'd have to say wait a minute one at a time or i can't do this right now which is what i'm having to set firm boundaries because they're starting to jump in uninvited and create a bit of havoc <clears throat> but I love it when they make sense and are not so cryptic that all I get is gobbledygook because yes I can't stand being spoken to in um, foreign languages where I don't know what what they're saying so they then have to google and um, some of it's ancient so you can't get a proper translation um, or when they just give me cryptic random words that don't make sense at all and I'm like what are you talking about I find that a waste of my time and energy so I get rather annoyed with the spirits when they do that because they're eternal beings they can they can drop in and out anytime they like to communicate but I don't have that much time I'm getting older and time is ever more precious however I did do a trance drumming Back in May, I had to go through all my trance drumming notes because I remembered the spirit saying rather randomly, and it made no sense at the time, Strelitzia. And I remembered replying, oh, that's a bird of paradise, which I grow in my garden. And then about four or five days ago, I was walking around my side garden, and there was a massive big strelitzia flower of a different kind of strelitzia that my daughter gifted to me. It's a giant one and it has totally different colours to the normal bird of paradise which is orange and yellow. And it had um, a blue, like a blue, almost purple royal blue tongue and white sort of petals. Um, so I took, on one of my videos I posted recently because it was just so stunning. And then when I looked at it, I realised, oh, it's a form of strelitzia because the flower shape is the, it's the same, even though it's a much larger flower and different colorations. It's the same species of flower, right? So I got, my blood ran cold and I got chills and I had to go inside and look up those trance drumming notes which by and large I mostly think are just nonsensical and gobbledygook and often about me trying to work out what's happening with my romantic non-existent romantic life and um, so I get very distressed sometimes and very confused and think well what's real and what's just me wishing and hoping and yearning and being ridiculous 
and there was the confirmation, the validation. Just just on that one little tiny little thing about the strelitzia. So then I thought, well, if that's accurate, then what else is accurate? So I put the notes away because can't buy into it too much. We'll just have to wait, see what the future brings. But that was just a little kind of pinch or tweak from the multiverse to say, we told you about the Strelitzia back in May, and here it is near the end of September. Here's your Strelitzia blooming as we predicted. They weren't that specific. They just said one word, Strelitzia. But there's the um, evidence that um, they're, uh, they're being factual, actually, and um, telling me things that are not, not completely nonsensical or absurdist or what I worried might be actually a bit malicious or mischievous leading me up a garden path. So um, <clears throat> so it told me when I perused all those notes that I have to just put my faith in the gods and um, not get sort of um, too distressed over mortals because mortal beings have their own agendas and their own rationale for doing what what that why they do things and how they how they they communicate with me or don't communicate as the case may be and they have their own you know their own problems their own issues and the, the trick is for me to not buy into the bullshit including my own bullshit my own doubts and fears and to just continuously dance and live my best life and you know whoever's meant to be in my life as a as a life partner, you know, will eventually arrive in my life. So there is that. But yeah, the Strelitzia thing, the Strelitzia thing really got me kind of intrigued because I, I got quite a surprise to see that beautiful plant and flower. It's been there for about four or five years, I think my daughter gave it to me. So... And the other message from that too is everything has its own season and you have to wait for the blossoms to unfurl or for the love to grow and unfurl with the appropriate person at the appropriate time and only the gods can know who that person truly is because in, the, in, in my dance space I'm surrounded by lots of men every weekend and women and um most of the men are unavailable and the few that are available I would not choose for whatever reasons so um, it makes it very very difficult but it only takes one one person to walk in and just go have the right the right um, the right what, what's the word charisma or ingredients or heart and soul that connects with me to show me, demonstrate to me that he truly deeply loves me and wants to have a relationship with me, which is hard in that scene because by and large it's people there just for hookups or crass little, you know, um, what what did they refer to, what did they refer to it in their promo the other day, which I thought was hilarious. One night flings. I'm not interested in any of that. I'm waiting to find out who the one is. I don't date on the internet or on my YouTube channel. If I were going to date, it would have to be a man that I've actually met and got to know in real life that I can consider I can trust, that will treat me with, you know, genuine love and kindness and respect and honour.